The college football regular season has now wrapped up and we have entered a rather stressful or exciting stretch of the off season, depending on which university you're a fan of. And for the Washington State Cougars, there were a couple moves that happened yesterday on Monday that were anticipated to happen. First off, they officially let go of defensive coordinator Jeff Schmetting. And then later in the afternoon, it was announced that the rumors were true. Offensive coordinator Ben Arbuckle decided to head to the University of Oklahoma on a three-year deal. So while the search for defensive and offensive coordinators has likely already begun, the biggest uncertainty for WSU and its fans are whether or not John Mateer will be staying in Pullman. There are solid arguments on both sides for whether John should stay or whether John should go. And so today we're going to get into the pros and cons of whether he should stay or whether he should go. This is an article by Greg Witter from Cougfan.com. If you're a fan of Cougar athletics, make sure to go subscribe to Cougfan.com. Pay for their monthly subscription. I'm telling you, it is so worth it. So the transfer portal in college football opens up in just under a week. On Monday, December 9th, players will officially be able to enter the transfer portal and start to be officially recruited by universities. As this article states, that means that for Cougar fans, that means sweaty palms and racing hearts as they pray for a bit of Cougar collective magic. And for the rest of the college football world, it means a ton of eyes on Pullman as one of the nation's most coveted potential free agents maps his future. I can't tell you the amount of Oklahoma and Auburn fans that have been commenting on all of my shorts that I've made on John Mateer in the past. They all want him and they all think that they're going to get John Mateer. But up to this point in the year, John Mateer has been severely underrated. The national spotlight has not been on him whatsoever. He's nowhere to be found in any of the Heisman speak. And this article states that when it comes to on-field production, he easily belongs in the company of quarterbacks like Texas's Quinn Ewers, Oregon's Dylan Gabriel, Miami's Cam Ward, Alabama's Jalen Milrow, and Georgia's Carson Bex. And all of those guys guys are believed to hold NIL packages this season of no less than $1.5 million. With the recent additions to his NIL offerings, John Mateer is believed to be somewhere around $400,000 currently. And just how does he compare to all of those guys that we previously mentioned? Well, this year out of all of college football, John Mateer has the most points responsible for with 268. Cam Ward is in second place with 254. Mateer has the most total touchdowns with 44 total. Those come by the way of 29 passing touchdowns and 15 rushing touchdowns. He is tied for fourth most in passing touchdowns. He is 14th in passing yards. He's 9th in passing efficiency. He's 4th in the nation in quarterback rushing touchdowns. He's 6th overall in quarterback rushing yards. He is the only player with 20 plus passing touchdowns and 10 plus rushing touchdowns, which is just the second time in WSU history that a quarterback has reached both of those stats. He is the only player in the country with 3,000 plus passing yards and 500 plus rushing yards. He is the all-time WSU leader for quarterback rushing touchdowns in a career with 15, and he did that in just one season starting. His 15 rushing touchdowns this year are second most among anyone that has played at WSU in a single season. He also has the second most touchdowns in a WSU season only behind Anthony Gordon. And with John Mateer's over 3,000 passing yards, 25 plus passing touchdowns, 800 plus rushing yards, and 15 plus rushing touchdowns, only six other players in the last 28 years have done this. And three of them won the Heisman. And over the last eight seasons, five of the Heisman winners led the country in touchdowns. The fact that he is not currently in the Heisman race shows the bias within media. I don't care if he, they're playing Mountain West opponents. Ashton Genty, all respect to him, but he's playing the same opponents that WCU is. All that being said, Open Doors, a company that tracks NIL deals and monitors trends, projected over the summer that the average NIL package for a top 25 quarterback in 2025 would be $1.3 million. But given the current marketplace, that seems low. And moreover, Mateer isn't a top 25 quarterback. He's a top 10 quarterback, maybe a top five quarterback, and he's just a third year sophomore. Paul Sorensen had reported earlier this month on Jason Puckett's Old Crimson podcast that Mateer already has an offer from a university for a million dollars in NIL riches for next season. Technically, no school or alum can contact a player unless his name is in the portal, but with essentially no enforcement of these rules, college football is likely just an unregulated casino. There's no enforcement agency that's out there actually putting fines on universities for doing so. Now, this article talks about how Cam Ward a year ago was in a similar place as Mateer today. Cam Ward was decided on either going to the NFL draft or transferring universities, but their two situations are a little different. So far, he's had no desire to leave Pullman, not that anyone know, knows of, and the Cougar Collective has been doing all that they can to try to put together packages to retain him. Similar to Ashton Genty with Boise State, he was given offers to go play at other universities for more money than he was receiving at Boise, but Ashton Genty decided to stay to build his legacy. As we know now, Ben Arbuckle has taken the job at the University of Oklahoma, so that also comes 
complicates things. Will John want to follow his offensive coordinator to Oklahoma? Or will he stay in Pullman with the current core of skill players that we have on the team and trust Jake Dickert's plan to hire a new offensive coordinator and help WSU take that next step next year? Now we get to the pros and cons of whether John Mateer were to leave or to stay in Pullman. First off, obviously, if you were to leave Pullman, you likely have an ability to get far more NIL money. Playing in a Power 4 conference instead of the Pac-12, which is now rebuilding, would offer increased competition and exposure for the NFL. If you head to another university, you likely will be getting better support from the defensive side of the squad. WCU had one of the worst defenses in college football this year. They were 115th in total defense out of a total of 133 D1 universities. And for the offense to go out there and put up so many yards and so many points, that must be a bit frustrating for Mateer in the offense. As well as finally, a fan base that would turn out more than 25,000 fans for a home game and stays beyond halftime. On the other side, there are some solid reasons for staying. Number one are going to be the comfort level with coaches, his teammates, and the warmth of an adoring college town community. Pullman, Washington is a university small town. You are there for the university. And unless you have attended WSU yourself, you do not understand the passion and the feeling that you get when you arrive on campus, when you attend a tailgate, when you're in Martin Stadium for a football game. Next, there's the chance for John Mateer to become a WSU icon for life rather than just a hired gun with a little leash somewhere else. John Mateer in his first year as a starter is already breaking WSU records. And if he were to stay the full three years of his eligibility at Washington State University, he would likely go down as the best quarterback at Washington State if he stays on this trajectory. You look at Gardner Minshew and what he did here for this one year. The amount of WCU legendary quarterbacks, Drew Bledsoe, Ryan Leaf, just to name a couple. If he were to go to another university, there is no complete guarantee that he would have the starting role, although obviously I think that he would win it. But if he were to start struggling like he did at some point early in this season, they don't have the room for the, the growing opportunities at other universities that are maybe in the SEC. And instead of giving him that growth opportunity, they would instead pull him and put in the next guy. A reason for staying is that you would still be able to get notable NIL money. As described earlier right now, he's believed to be receiving around $400,000 again in just his first year of starting in college football. And we'll have to see what other sources chip in and if we could push him over a million dollars next year if he were to stay at WSU. And then the fourth reason for staying is the schedule that WSU has built out for 2025. This schedule next year will feature road trips at North Texas, where Eric Morris, the former offensive coordinator, is now coaching, at Ole Miss, at Virginia, versus Toledo, versus Louisiana Tech, and at James Madison. The Cougs will be playing in SEC football next year at Ole Miss, I hope to see you there, and I hope to see John Mateer in a WCU uniform playing for the Cougs against Ole Miss. Then also, barring a rush of players to the portal, as I mentioned, the core of skill guys, right now the big guy leaving from the offense is wide receiver Kaya Williams, but returning, you have wide receiver Chris Hudson, Carlos Hernandez, Josh Meredith. You got true freshman, going to be a true sophomore next year, running back Sean Parker. Also running back Leo Pulalasi, who's going to be a sophomore next year. You run it back with the majority of the same players that you had from this last year, and you're going to be a top 15, top 10 offense in all of football. Then we get some insight from former WCU players and pro football veterans in Jed Collins, Jack Thompson, and Alex Brink. Collins had to say, at the next level, you need to perform your entire contract or at least ball out the last year. At this NIL level, there is no waiting for return. John has proven his worth, and it is up to us as Cougs to define his value at Washington State. The questions John will need to ask are these. How does this school value me now? How does this school value me in the future? Jack Thompson states, John is such an enjoyable young man to be around. He fits WSU like a glove. Coug Nation as a whole needs to join arms to support the Cougar Collective to make sure not just John, but all our Cougs stay in Pullman. Now, in terms of the key question, if I were in John's situation, I would stay at Washington State. Coming back from my senior year was the best decision outside of Molly Mary that I ever, ever made. This college football environment is so toxic right now, and for me, it's a question of loyalty. He was given an opportunity here, and he's run with it, no pun intended. Cougar Nation will never forget him if he stays. The story that could be written is one for the ages. Then he adds, if your thing is to be a mercenary, that's one thing. To stay and really carve a true legacy, one that exceeds all others before you, it's impossible to put a value on that. And quite honestly, at the next level, decision makers take notice. If I were getting ready to draft someone with my first or second pick, someone that I want to be a leader of my franchise, I'm going to be damn sure I check all the boxes and one is commitment. When the bullets are flying, you know what you really have. 
Asking to be a leader of a franchise, that's important. Then Alex Brink states, if you take money to transfer and you go, it just means the expectation becomes higher and it's just more difficult for many guys. I think quarterbacks are in a really unique position because if you're a really talented quarterback, even if you're not at a big time program, you could play your way into significant financial gains at the NFL level. Look at Josh Allen. Other positions feel like maybe they have to enter the transfer portal. And it's been pretty clear, you just haven't seen a ton of success from guys that transfer at the collegiate level and find the same sustained success they found at their previous school because the dynamics change. He also said the other thing is what you've seen this year, and this is where I think the calculus changes too, is with the expanded playoff. If you're at a good program that can win ball games, you're going to be in the college football playoff mix. If the nucleus recognizes that and it gets communicated that way, that you have a good culture and good coaches, you can be in the mix anywhere. It's harder at some places than others, sure. But you can't tell me that if Washington State retains their top players for next year, that they can't be a double-digit win football team, and right there in the mix again. So when are the crucial dates? The football transfer portal is open twice per academic year. This year, the first period runs from December 9th through the 28th, and the second is from April 16th through the 25th. So we'll see what happens over this coming week, and I hope that if John Mateer decides to stay, that he comes out with a press conference rather soon, stating he's staying, why he's staying. And I'm looking forward to making a player profile on John Mateer to highlight where he came from, what his story is, and why fans should continue to root for him. I'll make that video no matter where he ends up going, but I'm going to do it after the announcement. But with the information that was covered today, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on why you think John Mateer should stay, why you think he should go. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM to stay up to date on all things Washington State University Athletics, and we'll see you in the next one.